What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room. Week six of season seven of the GBA, the San Francisco Giantes are team building for the Milwaukee Saws Bucks and their coach, Battler X. So much to say here. So much to say. Uh, one, Battler X and I, um, as well as his predecessor, Steve, and the Milwaukee Saws Bucks and the San Francisco Giantes have a storied history in the worst season one of the worst seasons i'd ever performed in my first season i beat him twice and then in the season where i had the strongest start the gba has ever seen i lost to him twice <laughs> and we've battled lots and uh off off camera and on streams and uh just we, we have we have a lot of battling history and we're about 50 50 uh in the in the scheme of things and Steve is un unpredictable, and I think, I don't know how that somehow rubs off on Battler X as well, but Battler X is even more unpredictable. And to top it all off, he brought a bunch of Gen 7 Mons, and I, I'll i be honest with you guys, I haven't laddered in Gen 7. In Gen 6, Gen 5, a lot in Gen 4, I, I, I laddered crazy amounts i loved showdown and um even before that shoddy battle that was that was like my thing but now that i only really devote um time to playing draft format i don't have a lot of experience against these gen 7 mons and that kind of terrifies me because i have no idea what to expect no idea what they're going to do but the the mon he has on his team you can see directly above my head here uh, on the right side of the screen and he has Cresselia, Zerkatree, Lycanroc, Kartana, Mimikyu, Zoroark, Starmie, Swampert, Hariyama, Komo'o, and Licky Licky. On the left over <coughs> that way uh, is my team hasn't changed uh, this week, but I guess I didn't really talk about... Last week, my team builder didn't go up, and I didn't really talk about the move and transition I made with Ferrothorn. So I want to talk about that a little bit before I go into things. You guys, of course, saw last week's battle already, or if you didn't, uh, don't bother. <laughs> um, but I dropped Ferrothorn, and one of the reasons for that is I call it user error if you want to i don't really care it caused me a loss one week because its passivity allowed it to get set up on and i got swept many other weeks i almost never feel safe bringing it and that's the wrong feeling you should get from a pokemon that's supposed to be a wall and it doesn't have reliable recovery so here i am on a team with a lot of bulky Pokemon. I mean, I've got Tapu Fini is bulky, Bronzong is bulky, uh, Rhyperior is bulky. I've got this Arcanine that's uh, got Intimidate and can be run defensive set, very bulky. I got this Umbreon, very bulky. I've got a lot of bulk. Ferrothorn didn't fit in there. He fit in on hazard stacking teams, but I found spikes are hard to get up in this format with so many especially in a free draft format when there's so many wall breakers running around and it's so easy to put hp fire on literally anything and just going okay now i've got my ferrothorn check and i just the mons that encourages my opponents to bring um and the the way the things i'm supposed to check it's so easy for them to just put on hp fire and it it's it was in team prep, it made me nervous because I would never feel confident when I had it. A lot of my other mons, I'm confident. Any given week, I'm like, if I find the right situation, this mon can do a lot of good. Every other time, though, with, with Ferrothorn, I felt like any time I brought it, I was on the edge about whether or not... I mean, any given time it came in, I was like, well, it could just have HP fire. And that's probably not the right thinking to have. It's about assessing likely builds, and that's true, but it's the GBA, where, and anything can happen in this draft league format. Anything can, I mean, just last week, John brought a physical HP fire Tapu Bulu to deal with the Sawsbucks Kartana. I mean, it's, it just goes to show you anything can happen, and it can instantly turn a wall into not a wall, a, a liability. And so I didn't like having that on my team. 
And what I wanted to replace it with was something to help me with momentum, to help me more with electric types. I picked up Rhyperior, but that's not necessarily enough. I think what I need is a more well-rounded way to threaten electric types who opt to bring coverage to just take on whatever my potential electric check might be. So as Ferrothorn being my electric check was a failure because all electric types run through my team and all they need to do is bring HP fire and Ferrothorn is handled and they can just do whatever they want. I don't have enough answers to them. Now, with Amoongus and with Rhyperior, HP Ice is the only shared weakness, and that's not going to cut it. You're going to have to bring HP Water or Grass for the Rhyperior, or Ice or Fire for the Amoongus. Between the two of them, it makes it risky for Electric types. Amoongus has counter momentum potential with, re uh, with Regenerator. It has reliable recovery with Synthesis. It has Spore, which, of course, with the Misty Terrain makes it less valuable. But I've had Amoongus before, and I found that Spore is not even the best greatest boon of that build so that's me talking about my Amoongus pickup a little bit I have a wall that I think is more versatile that has reliable recovery that helps me a lot with picking up or preventing the loss of momentum and I'm just really excited to have it on the on the squad now um, pseudo hazing with uh, with clear smog and just in general love this Pokemon super glad to have it on the team Let's have a look at what I'm bringing this week. We are bringing Trip, the Amoongus, is making his way back. Fresh is returning, haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. Uh, Moana, Mad Mets, Night's Watch, and Genghis Guard. Now let's go into the sets a little bit as we sort of talk about his team. Um, Amoongus, Giga Drain, Hidden Power, Fire, Foul Play, and Synthesis. This is my primary switch into Zerkatry. It's my primary... Uh, it's a, a tertiary answer to Kartana. It can take on the Mimikyu relatively well. It it basically walls anything that's not in a wall break status, and it does well against two of his wall breakers already. So it's a really good, versatile switch into a majority of his team. It checks the, the Starmie. It hard counters that... Swampert. Even if it's packing uh, Ice Punch, it'll be a really good switch in. Um, and also, that would be a super ballsy read on Battler X's part to predict the um, predict the Amoongus switch in and go straight for an Ice Punch when it could be running Stealth Rock. He could be predicting a different threat, going for Earthquake. There's a lot going on there, and so um, this is absolutely not what his H. This is not what his EV investment is, guys. I don't know what's going on here. For some reason, whenever I... Whenever I start recording, I don't know what is going on, but it always seems to goof up the the EVs. I don't know what's going on there. It's, um... I had to check my, my spreadsheet. I'm running a mixed defensive set, uh, but primarily specially defensive to maximize uh, my ability to take on the Zerkatry. Um, running Black Sludge uh, with Synthesis, which I, I think could be important in this game. It's going to be important for me to take a lot of hits on this thing. It's going to be a really good pivot switch for me. So we also have Fresh. Uh, the Trip Fresh core is really effective for me. Fresh is running a defensive set this week. Rocky Helmet, Intimidate with Flare Blitz, Extreme Speed, Will-O-Wisp, and Morning Sun. Um, was contemplating Flamethrower over the Flare Blitz, but his team is more specially defensive than it is physically defensive and the physically defensive mon uh kartana i like how i call it physically defensive it is paper thin especially offensive or especially defensively but flare blitz is four times super effective stab high base power it's taking out the kartana even if it's running max hp in a defensive set so fresh is my primary kartana answer it doesn't have anything really effective for taking on fresh it'll get intimidated i can take it out uh, check it out scare it out with a flare blitz i can heal up with morning sun against it if i need to i can start spreading status with the will-o-wisp as long as the um fairy aura isn't up uh, it's a really good check to a lot of his physical threats even the lichen rock uh, if i switch in and get the intimidate off on it unless it's running a very offensive set i can actually survive a two hit ko in a lot of 
uh, regards and uh, get a will-o'-wisp off and then proceed to morning sun back up so running this set it will serve as a good check for a lot of those things it's a safe switch in sort of to physically oriented mon on his team that aren't necessarily that fresh isn't necessarily designed to check so for example the hariyama does have earthquake however it's not going to be o coing me after the intimidate uh, the komo o um, can run special, can run physical, can kind of be a lot of things, but if it is running physical, um, between Fresh and Moana, I'm sorry if you guys are, if my mic's picking up the noise out there, I wonder if it's effective enough to do that, but uh, there's a garbage truck going by. Uh, the Fresh can serve as as a switch in on the Komo O, it can help uh, neuter potential poison jabs that might be for the Moana, uh, but that said, that's enough about Fresh. He's a pretty standard fare. Um, he's also a really good switch into Mimikyu, so I've got a couple of Mimikyu answers here. Um, uh, I need to hurry this one up. So Moana <laughs> is running a Calm Mind Defog Surf Moonblast with enough speed to outspeed a max speed Zerka Tree with a Wakan Berry so that after one Calm Mind, I'll be one-shotting the Zerka Tree. I'll be surviving um, even a Life Orb uh, Thunderbolt and I'll be able to just take it out with ease so surf moon blast is pretty good for a majority of his team um, in fact I think everything gets at least neutrally hit by it uh, except for the Kartana then we've got Mad Ments. come on in I need to one second guys I have a knock at my door okay uh, so I have the Mad Ments who's running a choice scarf this week choice scarf moxie uh, with Outrage, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, and Shadow Claw. The Shadow Claw is to help me with the Cress and the Mimikyu. Uh, the Earthquake will take on the Zerka Tree, which I will outspeed. And then Outrage and Dragon Claw are just primary stabs, which will do a lot against almost everything else. Max Speed um, and Max Attack this week. Moving on, we have Night's Watch. His team is relatively weak to Ghost and Dark, so the last two Mon are just to sort of take advantage of that. Uh, my camera's losing focus. Come on, camera, you can do it. There we go. Night's Watch. Payback, Curse, Sleep Talk, and Rest. Now, the Hariyama and the Komo-O are sort of stop checks to this, so they'll need to be dealt with if they end up coming. I actually don't think it's very likely that either of them make it this week. Um, I don't think they serve super well. <laughs> don't mind the uh the rustling in the background that's my girlfriend um we are curse sleep talk and rest uh the rest talk option kind of just allows me a really strong amount of recovery quickly uh payback does very well against a lot of his team after a few curses this is a pretty good check to a lot of the things uh, a lot of the enemies on his team um, i can set up against any any wall or any non hyper aggressive threat and uh, it's it's gonna be helpful against the Cresselia if I can get up a few curses then I should be able to eventually get to a point where I can two hit KO and it won't be able to just um, recover on my face repeatedly or moonlight on my face repeatedly and uh, I would win a PP war because of sleep talk and rest anyway um, running a mixed defensive set again just to allow me to take hits from the Zerka tree uh, while simultaneously being able to take a decent hit from uh, several of the other threats on his team namely the Mimikyu and the Lycanroc of course I am at risk of uh, Secret Sword from the Kartana I'm at risk of um, close combat or Focus Blast from the Komo'o and a close combat or drain punch or what have you from the Hariyama so I it's not it's not a check all for every member of his team but the having dark stab would be certainly useful and will be very helpful against the Cresselia and potentially the Starmie as well Gengar is here focus sash just to give me a little bit of um, fallback damage this week shadow ball sludge wave focus blast and icy wind can two hit KO majority of the members of his team barring some specific sets or uh, potential setup by uh, the Komo'o or the um, Cresselia. So the goal here is to sort of, uh, with Moana having defog, I should be able to keep rocks off the field relatively well 
and he's only really got two rockers and Moana does very well against both of them. Uh, so I should be able to take a hit and dole back a two hit KO, outspeeding a decent amount of the threats on his team. His fastest mon is the Zoroark, I believe. He's got Zoroark and Starmie in the high speed tiers. Uh, I outspeed the Kartana. A lot of potential scarfers this week. He could be scarfing the Zoroark, he could be scarfing the Zerkatry, Kartana even, um, the Lycanroc. He actually does have quite a lot of speed the more I, the more I look at it, but it's still going to be my fast um, answer to several of his slower mons, and it's going to give me consistency. I, I guaranteed hit off on some things running the Focus Sash. So, um, looking at, at Gengar to put in a little bit of mid-game work this week, not looking to sweep with it, that job is going to fall more to Mad Men's, maybe Night's Watch, or just an eventual whittle down of his team because he doesn't have a lot of reliable recovery there. So I should be able to whittle things down. He's got the recover on the Cresselia, recover on the Starmie, and um, I guess wish on the Licky Licky. I don't really see it likely that Licky Licky comes. It doesn't really accomplish much unless he wants a cleric uh could be there but i sort of tiered it based on likelihood that i think he brings them i think it's i don't see a world in which he doesn't bring cresselia zerkatry electric types are still very good against my team i think lycan rock is a very offensive stealth rock option for him uh, it pairs well with uh, a fake zoroark lead also to potentially give him the momentum to set up rocks first turn or threaten out say a bronzong who might be willing to stay in against a Lycan rock, but would be at risk if he stayed in against a Zoroark. So he can play a lot of games with that. So I think the Zoroark comes. Kartana, I I'm on the fence, but it's very aggressive and a very high power pick. So I think there's a chance that he brings that too. Uh, the Mimikyu also, it, it, what it does best is take a hit, dole a hit. It gets free setup basically because it's very difficult to get around the disguise. And then everything else just sort of falls into the what he wants as support options. So that's going to be uh, it for this week. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions of what I probably should have brought in the comment section down below. You guys can look out for the battle coming up tomorrow. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.